I grew up being called a wigger. Not to be confused by Webster's definition, noun, a wig maker. Wikipedia best defines my dilemma. White nigger. You see, what this meant was I had been lied to as a child. I had been told that sticks and stones would break my bones and words would never hurt me. False. Years of being battered and bruised by the words that my peers would choose to use, being abused and thought indeed, thinking I would never be accepted for me. I felt like another stereotype, an archetype, a neophyte of self-worth, birthed into societal injustices of a choice a white mother and a black father made when they laid in a bed with no thoughts of my present tense. I attempted for years to place the blame on them and others while I myself stayed hidden under covers behind feelings about my roots. Kunta or Toby, black or white, John or Jackie. Why were these choices I had to make? Why couldn't I be just me and step out from behind this wall of racial inequality? In my teens, the N-word resounded to the nth degree. Cracker and nigger used in reference to a part of me that couldn't even be seen. I was a young man struggling to understand that we should embrace our differences. Instead, I was the one that hid from his. Why couldn't people alter their minds and see the cultural line that diminished in the wake of my mother and father birthing a biracial child? Now, if you haven't figured it out, those sticks and stones from long ago did less hurting than words ever did. Or maybe it was my silence. Staying blinded to bigotry instead of letting the voice inside me cry out. Now, decades later, as I daily look into the eyes of my beautiful children whose DNA has determined they are a quarter Back, lawyer, doctor, musician, athlete, dancer, or anything else they choose to be. The discrimination and hate must cease with me. Racism is not over, but I am 100% over racism.